was very good. Good evening. <laughs> good evening to the millions watching and the thousands in attendance. We're back again at Friday Night Flies. We just had our Scotties here tie up a couple wicked egg patterns. That to me is like going to the Pony Espresso circa 1999 where you could only get your eggs scrambled. I just want to mix it up here just a little bit. Just a little bit. And make something that has been popping off on the river all year, every year. And that is a naked caddis. So this is a caddis larva without its shell casing put on. <laughs> they, they build up a little shell around their uh, maggot looking body here. And I'll show you one because we're scientists and not just fishermen here. Now here we have a caddis larva case. Well, easier to see behind my shirt possibly. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. There it is. And check out what just fell out of it. Can you see that? Like a maggoty... Tequila worm. Was that an elephant? It elephant's? looks like a... A little bit. But not really. It's not something so you'd want to eat. You can see that, can't you? Now, if you look at them in detail, they got a little head with some legs, almost pincer-looking appendages, and that's what we're going to concentrate on here. So we're going to try and imitate that with this fly. So to tie this one, Monroe, please. we got our little one in, in the house here. Hey, Monroe, say hi to everyone here. Look at the camera and say hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> All right, nice one. That's a good one. Okay, now can you please get out of my way and go play uh, hippie sack with Brad? Okay, let's go play hippie sack. Okay. Come on, Monroe. We're going to tie this one with some uh, size, what do we got here? Size 8 long curved hooks. We've got some heavy uh, 3 16 cyclop beads, nice and heavy to sink it down. Gonna put some lead on that thing to get it really far down, and a bit of uh, vinyl ribbing, really important for the presentation. We got some scud back here. You can even use a piece of Ziploc bag. Don't be too picky. They're fish. <laughs> some uh, UV crystal flash, uh, very minimally tied in. You don't even need it, but. I think it makes the difference. You're like the crystal flash guy. Yeah, it's got to be done. And, and peacock curl. And peacock curl, absolutely. You can put peacock curl in pretty much And we got, a, we got like some, oh, we got some sort of, uh, well, I'm colorblind. Can somebody say what that is? Uh, what color is that? It's almost like the color of your shirt. Not quite. Yellowy, uh, yellowy, yellowy. yellowy. Yeah. It's like yeah. a yellowy. Yellowy-ish dubbing. It gets a lot darker once it gets in the water, and uh, we got a bit of pheasant tail for the beard. Imitates the legs on this uh, naked caddis, and a bit of peacock hurl. The hurl, as always. I gotta get called on it to uh, imitate a bit of a dark head. So what we're gonna do then is get rolling right along. We're going back down to the vise. We're going down to the vise. Got myself a hook out. Gonna get a bead. <laughs> These need a bit of forcing on. There you go. We got bead on hook, as you can see. And we're gonna, I'm gonna tighten that up a bit. I like a nice firm grip on my vise. All right, there we go. We got her all gripped up. I just got some black, whatever you got, the thread doesn't matter. You it's thread all about the box. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The like the thread doesn't matter. It does. The thread doesn't matter. It does. All right. I'm going to use a bit of your beard to tie the legs on this thing. I'm just going to get a bit of thread on this uh, on this hook here. Not too, too much. I'm going to take my tag off right away because nobody likes anything in their way. I'm going to take a bit of wire. If you're fishing slower water, that bead head will be enough to sink it down. But if you're fishing faster water, like we do in the Birkin head, you want to get a bit of lead on there. So uh, we're going to wrap a bit of lead on. Give it a good one. And you'll notice that I don't get I don't get right in behind that bead because we got a bunch of material waiting to go on there, like the pheasant tail 
and the peacock curl. So you want to leave a nice gap in there so you don't crowd that. So when it comes time to finish that tie, it's just going to be a mess. So I'm doing a couple wraps behind that wire so it doesn't twist, but it probably will. I'm going to pinch that with my thumb and index on my right and just get her wrapping. And we got a nice long curved shank on this hook so we can get a lot of weight on it. Because we want it right down at the bottom where they get washed around. And the boys have been tying egg patterns because this time of year we got a couple different breeds of salmon in the river and the egg patterns nail it. But if you have a look... Soon to be a third. Soon to be a third. You can name them if you want. Okay. okay. Well, let's go through the names, All shall right. we? Start one off. Okay. Chinook, a.k.a. Spring, a.k.a. King. Brad? I'm going to go with Sockeye, yes. a.k.a. Reds. A.k.a. Reds. And I will say Coho. Which are very close to entering. And and one of my favorite salmon, for sure, are the Coho. I definitely like fishing for Coho. So you notice I'm putting a good wrap of wrap a thread behind the lead here because we don't want all of our gear sliding down to the back. Now I like wrapping down the curve a little bit on this uh, on this fly because it gives a nice bend to the body like it naturally has. And we want to tie everything on. Last name first, first name last. So the last thing to be wrapping over our material is going to be our vinyl ribbing. So I'm tying that in first. Got myself a nice long piece there. Probably way too long. I'll make two out of that easy. So we got that wrapped in. Snip my tag off there. I'm going to take a piece of scud back. And I find it helps if you snip it at a, when you're tying it in, if you, uh, just give it a little snip, give it a bit of a point. She's a bit easier to tie in than if it's just a flat flat tag you're trying to tie in. So I just got her pinched down with my thumb. Give it a few wraps. Double check that it's nice and even around the hook because we're going to curl it back over. He has a nose. And I'm going to wrap that down the shank a bit. Got a bit of a tag there. And I'll snip that off. Next thing, we're going to take very minimal amount of this uh, UV flash here. Two strands is all we need. And all it does is look that much more tempting than your average naked caddis. So I'm getting Two that. strands more. <laughs> She's wearing high heels. She's wearing high heels this one. She's out to dance and she's going home with a fish. Let's just put it that way. Because nobody likes all this casting and no biting stuff. I mean, that's the 90s. Serious. So we got that all tied in here. Next thing we're going to do is take a bit of that... Uh, yellowish dubbing. I'd say it's pretty much the same color of Brad's t-shirt minus the ketchup and pasta stains. And we're just going to get this dubbing going. Nice and sparse to start with and we're going to pile it on a little bit more once we get around the back. So it looks like a nice fat naked caddis with heels on. Oh, yeah, look at that dub. All right. Let's get a few wraps on here. So we're going to taper from the back, gradually getting larger. And that, that lead will help it uh, hump up a little bit, you'll see. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at the humpy hump. Little bit more dubbing. Oh, really? A little bit more wrapping. And a little bit more dubbing. 
really no. Okay. You'll notice as well, if you go to check out the recipe for these, some of them call for like size 10 hooks and silly stuff like that. If you go in the river and you have a dig around, you'll see that these things are huge. They're, mm -hmm. They get up to over an inch long if you dig them out of their cases. You go into the river, flip over a few rocks and, and have a good look. They get pretty meaty, so don't be afraid to go large. Even go size size 6. Okay. All righty. Oh, I see. Look at that. That's looking nice and thick there. Notice we haven't crowded the uh, bead too much. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab those two strands. Of that UV dubbing we had and we're gonna try and get them just on the either side of the body here and we're gonna wrap that in couple of wraps looking good we're gonna take that scud back we're gonna pull that over that UV UV flash I'm gonna put a couple of wraps on there I just got word from NBC we're doing a fishing show not with Get NBC. out! Not with NBC, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> somebody independent, anyhow. What the? Definitely not broadcasting center. Yeah, we're gonna we're it. gonna work on it. All right, so we got the flash on either side. We got the scud back tied in there. Now we're gonna make some sections, and these things will also work as maggots because once those salmon start dying, flies love eating salmon, and flies also love laying eggs. And fly eggs turn into maggots. So this thing will actually imitate a few different flies. You can use them earlier in the season as well because these caddis larvae are in year round. So there we go. Cool. We're having all that tied in. We got a nice sectioned up body there. Sure. All maggoty caddis looking. Say what? Let's snip all that out of there. There we go, we got the body and all that. Now we are going to build us a larva head. I got four small strands of peacock hurl there. And we're going to just pinch that on there and give it a couple of wraps using the index finger and the thumb. Give that a wrap on. Don't be afraid to get it nice and tight in behind the bead. Got a few tags. We're just going to pop those off there. Pemberton Fest coming back, eh? 2014? How do you love that? Was it July what, 14th? 12th. 14th? I can't remember. It's one of those two dates. Hopefully. Well, we're all up for it, as none of us can remember. Last time. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so got a couple nice wraps on there, right in behind that bead. We're gonna pack some thread in there, keep it from sliding back. Bit of hurl. I could have done a bit more peacock hurl if you wanted to grab maybe eight small strands. You can do that. I'm gonna snip those tags off. I'm gonna give uh give this thing a little beard. This uh this will imitate the legs that uh caddis larva have. Um where's that other one there? I did one here with a small hackle and a beard. You can do that. The fish don't seem to mind. They're not they're not very picky. You know, it's getting cold out, they just wanna get a meal in and go relax. So I'm gonna make this about half the length of the fly itself. So I got my length pinched off there and I'm going to hold this underneath the fly and give it two loose wraps and then tighten that up. Give it an adjustment because uh, all this material likes to roll on itself after a few wraps. So now I got four under there. And there we go. Give it a few more wraps. And I'm going to pinch the rest of these tags off of here. 
Oh, look at that. I missed one. Got it. Perfect. A few more wraps just to get everything nice and tight together. And uh, you'll always notice the back side of these beads are tapered, uh, tapered inward like they've been countersunk or something like that. But you just want to make sure that that bead's not spinning too much on itself. Otherwise, your fly is going to slide backwards. And unlike all these purists doing hand finished half hitches and what have you and gasoline with lead in it. I'm just going to finish her off with a good couple of wraps. Pinch her off again. And another good couple of wraps. Well, the way I'd fish this fly would be on a uh, floating line with about a 10 foot uh, tippet and leader and a strike indicator about 8 feet up, 5 to 8 feet up, and that'll sink down nicely. And you will see that strike indicator disappear, I guarantee you. Guarantee. So get out there and tie something. You got them flies. Keep those chrome reels spinning. Pemberton Fish Finder, Friday night flies all day, every day. We're back. We're back.